Okay, so just uh, this last video on episode three, and you know, then we'll move on to a few other points that I that I discovered that just aren't sitting right with me. Um, but I wanted to bring up the fact that at the end of the interview, or you know, at the end of one of the segments that they show in the documentary, Brendan asks about how long is this going to take. And the investigator says, oh, it shouldn't be much longer. Why? And Brendan replies, um, I need to get back in time for sixth hour. I have a project due. He just confessed to a rape and a murder. Why would he think that he was able to go back? Now, see, we only know what is shown in the videotape. We don't know what was said prior to that camera being turned on. We don't know what was said in the car. We don't know what was said at the school because it is proven that he was talked to at the school first and then transported. Why? See, here's my thing, folks. Um, I don't know if any of the other family members were questioned as deeply as Brendan was. I do know that Jody was questioned or at least attempted to be questioned as deeply as Brendan was, and she wasn't having it. Uh, Jody's a pretty street smart street. Blah, 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 blah. I'm sorry. She's a pretty street smart lady, you know? So when she, she got a funky vibe off of them and she said, yeah, no, I'm not talking to you. Um, but then they went after Brendan who's 16. He's impressionable. And, you know, here's the funny thing is so many people look at teenagers and because teenagers look like adults, you know, there's tall or taller than most adults, you know, and they look adult like people forget that up here, they're still children. They're still kids. They have no idea what's going on. They don't comprehend the world like an adult does. I mean, shit, I know some adults that don't comprehend the world as well as they should. Um, you know, so obviously, then on top of that, you know, we drill into our kids' heads. The police are the good guys. Go to the cops if you need help. So if they're telling him, we can help you, we can help you, you know, just tell us this, tell us this, and we'll help you. Obviously, you know, he's been told to trust the cops. Why wouldn't he trust the police? Why? He's been told his whole life that the police are the good guys. They're there to help you. And then they do some nefarious shit like this. It doesn't make any sense. The narrative is completely off. Um, any attorney worth a sack of potatoes would have seen that and would have used that in court as an arguing point, but his attorneys didn't, neither one. I think that those defense attorneys for Brendan Dassey, I think they were paid off by the prosecution because the prosecution's entire case hinged on Brendan Dassey's uh, confession. It hinged on his timeline of the events. And without that, they'd have been fucked. They had, their case was nothing but circumstantial evidence. And the fact of the matter is, is that Brendan Dassey's defense attorneys didn't put up much of a fight, which leads me to believe that they through the case for a reason. And I personally believe that that reason was so that the prosecution had a case against Stephen Avery. Now, I, I just, I, this whole thing is complete bullshit. I don't know if any of the other family members were questioned as closely as Brendan Dassey and Jody were, but I will say this. I don't think that they did as good of, a, of an investigation as they should have. And I will outline that in my next video.